Today I want to look at another REM song and quite a while ago now I looked at the track Feeling Gravity's Pull. Today I'm going to be looking at Pretty Persuasion and this is a great song with some great guitar playing from I think one of the underrated masters of rhythm guitar Mr Peter Buck and there's nothing too tricky to play here though there are some challenges I think in accurately picking some of these arpeggiated parts and this kind of arpeggio picking is a really important rhythm guitar skill to work on and I think this song provides a really good vehicle for practicing that kind of thing so I'm going to begin by playing a verse and chorus of the tune and then I'll break down what's going on. This one is from 1984 and the album Reckoning and I do love the mysterious jangly sound of early REM but I don't want to be one of these bores who drones on about early REM and is dismissive of all of the later stuff because I do like a lot of later REM stuff and I think the album Up is a masterpiece and Reveal is pretty good and even on the last couple of records there are some really strong moments. So back to Pretty Persuasion and clearly it's a great song but exactly what this song is about I'm not altogether sure and uh, to be honest I don't really know what Michael Stipe is on about in the majority of REM lyrics and maybe that's part of the charm of these songs is that there's a lot of room left for the listener to interpret these songs in his or her own way. But there are lots of interesting theories around online about what this song is about and one of the most plausible I think is that it's a political song about anti-consumerism and that seems reasonable enough to infer that from some of the lyrics in there and another theory or really I think it was an interview from Peter Buck and he said it was based on a dream that Stipe had and he was photographing the Rolling Stones in this dream and the Stones were playing their new song which was called Pretty Persuasion and perhaps the most curious interpretation or I think it was based on a Stipe interview and he said it was about swingers in his hometown of Athens Georgia so uh, there you go, a jangly indie rock anthem about swingers. Let's get into how this one is played and I'm going to try and keep this one reasonably concise I think but at the same time I'm going to go into a reasonable amount of detail and go through all of the pertinent parts of this song so let's go. I think one of the notable things about this track is the jangliness of it. It's really got that kind of Birdsian quality and I don't think that's achieved by 12 string guitars like Roger McGuinn did. Uh, there might be some 12 string guitars buried deep in the mix somewhere but for the most part it seems to be just layers of six string guitar and uh, I don't know how many guitars are going to be on the original recording but at least three possibly quite a lot more. So what I'm going to do in this video is just kind of give you uh, an average of what I think is going on with these guitar parts. I think often they're playing some slightly different things. You've got some strummed parts while other guitars are picking out some individual notes. So I'm just going to try and do the best I can to unpick what's going on and give you a playable version of this tune. There are really a couple of different ways you can approach this one I think. If you're more of a beginner or if you just want to have fun singing and playing the tune then you can approach it in more of a strummy way as I did just then actually. And if I'm singing and playing at the same time I'm going to want to keep the guitar quite simple. I'm not going to play all of the intricate little parts uh, simply because that's really hard to do when you're singing at the same time. But the other way of approaching it is to get into all of those 
arpeggio parts that I mentioned earlier and that's a bit more challenging and that's something I might do where I'm backing up somebody else on vocals if I'm playing it in more of a band kind of context. So you've got some options with this one. Let's kick off with this fantastic intro riff. What a great riff this is and we're starting off with this so that little melody on the B string really so we've got five four two and open and at the same time as we're playing those notes we're just letting the open top string ring as well so we've got that high E just droning away and then we're going back up so in terms of the frets here we've got five four two open two four two open on the b string as i say with that droning high e and then we've got this lovely arpeggiated part so so we're starting off with this shape here so just holding down this a note this is fret 2 on the 3rd string and we've got an open high E and B and we're picking it like this so in terms of the string numbers we've got 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1 played pretty fast and Peter Buck plays it really accurately so you're gonna to have to think about your picking hand here and the way you want to pick this and what I would recommend is playing it like this so down up up down up up down up not the only possibility but I think that's probably the smoothest way if you ask me Quite a tricky skill you might want to play that very slowly to start with if you're not used to doing this kind of thing and gradually build up speed and as always with anything technical it's all about getting it accurate and smooth and the rhythm correct before playing it fast so you could just turn that into a little exercise So that's the first part of the riff. And then we've got this. So some more of these picked arpeggios. We're going up to the fourth fret on the third string now. And we've got, again, those open two top strings. So we've got strings three, one, two. Then going down to the second fret on the third string. And again three one two and then three again and an open third string so and then we're hitting an E chord so so I'm just strumming probably the lower notes in that E chord and then we're arpeggiating the higher notes so strum and then I'm picking strings one two three and then finally we've got really just a D chord and an A chord and just in between those chords I think you can just maybe hear open top string or open first and second string so just in the gap between the chords and then the riff goes round again Then we're heading into the verse and the basic gist of it seems to be this. So 
some great jangly birdsy type stuff here lots of sus4 sus2 chords happening here so we're starting off with a d sus4 and then just lifting up your pinky to play a regular d chord so I'm strumming it down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Then we're going to an A chord, or it's an A sus four chord. So if you think an A chord, but then you move the, the note on the B string up one fret, so from the C sharp to the D, got an A sus four. going to an A chord and then lifting up that C sharp note to give you an open second string and that's an A sus2 chord so and then putting that finger down again so A sus4 A A sus2 and then back to A this A chord stuff I mean, you've got some options with fingerings here so I, I tend to play my A chord like this just with fingers one two three and then I shift my third finger up for the sus four and lift my third finger up for the sus two there, there are other options I mean some people like to finger their A chord like this where you've got two one three uh, but still with that you move your third finger around to get those sus shapes uh, possibly you could use your little finger to get that sus4 as well so whatever feels most comfortable for you and the strum on this part okay it varies slightly on the recording i think some of those layered guitars are doing slightly different things but i'm going down 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 up down up Notice how I'm changing to the A chord on the push. So one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and, and also to the sus2 chord. So we're changing on upbeats there. So the and of four and the and of two. One, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and That's the basic verse, but the main thing with this kind of strumming stuff is just keep your strumming hand moving, keep relaxed. The strumming motion for me is coming, it's a bit from the elbow, it's a little bit from, from the wrist. It's a kind of combination of those things, but stay nice and relaxed as you're doing this and it should sound good. So. Then we're into kind of a bridge section or maybe you could call it a pre-chorus section and here I think some of the guitars are just playing a kind of chuggy muted power chord part and then other guitars are playing longer strummed chords so I'll take you through both of those things let's start with the power chord part so I think you could play it something like this <laughs> starting with this F sharp power chord so frets two and four and moving those fingers over onto the next pair of strings we've got a B power chord going down to an A power chord so open fifth string two on the fourth string and then back to the F sharp and then E to F sharp bit of palm muting is going to sound good. Notice also that we're pushing into some of these chords so changing on upbeats once again. So, so here, also here, maybe here. And then just 
before you go into the course, you're just repeating that E2 F sharp move. So that's one option that you've got. And then I think there are other guitars just doing bigger strummed chords here. So we've got just full F sharp minor bar chord. So Part, you can play a full E chord going to the F sharp. Uh, you could possibly try combining those two parts if, if you wanted to. So, um, Again, got some options there. Play around with that, see what feels most comfortable to you and what you prefer the sound of. Onto the chorus, and again, you've got the option here of doing a simple strummy version or playing those more elaborate picked parts. And when Peter Buck plays this live, he tends to just go for the strummy option, I think. So that would sound something like this. So we've got. Quite straightforward this I think we've just got a D chord E F sharp minor and again some pushes so D pushing into E and into the F sharp minor keeping your strumming hand moving up and down all the way through that. And if you wanted to do that in more of a picky kind of a way, you could do it something like this. I'm hearing lots of variations on this between the guitars on the recording, but uh, so this is one option, so. So just strumming that D chord and then arpeggiating the top strings in reverse order. So strings one, two, three. Similar kind of thing on an E chord. And then on the F sharp minor. So you could be quite flexible with the precise picking pattern there on some of these chords. So. could try almost a, a combination of strumming and picking so some of these chords are a bit more strummy other chords you're just picking out those single notes we're nearly there there is actually one more section a little bridge or middle eight which goes like this Just using chords which we've already had in the song, so starting off with the, the F sharp minor, uh, maybe just playing the, the lower notes and making it more of a power chord, and then A, pushing into E, and then D sus4 to D, F sharp minor. A, D, and then I've got this kind of rhythmic part. All of the band are kind of going with this rhythm, so it's just D to A. And then I think we've got a reintro before uh, we go around for the final verse and chorus. So the gear that I'm using today. And I'm not sure what Peter Buck would have used on this recording. He's obviously associated with Rickenbackers, but I've seen him using all kinds of different guitars. He certainly uses Telecasters from 
time to time and that's what I'm using today. This is my 52 reissue Telecaster. Uh, I suppose this is my go-to guitar if I want a bit of sparkly jangle. And then the amp I'm going through today, it's not an amp at all, it's my Kemper Profiler. Just using that for a bit of convenience today, I can just plug straight into that and get a usable sound without too much fuss. And the profile that I'm using today is something called 63 Tremolux. So it's a Fender style profile, I'm assuming, so nice and bright and jangly. Seems to work really well for this song. That's all we have time for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you're interested, do check out that old Feeling Gravity's Pool video that I mentioned earlier. And if you'd like Tab, I have tabbed all of this stuff out and you can find that on my Patreon page. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you next time.